Welcome to Bed Crime Stories Podcast. I'm your host, T. Hope you're all doing well. If you're new here, a warm welcome. Thank you for checking out the channel. If you're someone who's been here before, thank you for showing up again. Let me just ask that after watching the video, if you find you enjoyed it or learned something, please do me a favor and smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support the work I do, please consider a Patreon subscription. I'll leave a link in the description. Now, let's dig in. The case of Lindsay and Robert Shiver gets more tangled by the day. They're the couple from Georgia that looks so perfect on paper. He's a former pro football player. She's a former beauty pageant contestant and cheerleader. They live in a sprawling mansion. They have a vacation home in the Bahamas. They travel there by private jet. It's the Instagram dream. It all sounds like La Dolce Vida to me. But now Lindsay is tethered to a condo in Nassau by an ankle monitor and facing charges of conspiracy to commit murder against her husband, Robert. Is this a midlife crisis? Is this boredom from too much of the good life? No one seems to know yet. All we do know is that between February of this year and mid-July, the Shivers' marriage imploded, and it culminated in that alleged murder plot wherein Lindsay sent a photo of her husband Robert to her Bahamian lover's friend with the words, kill him. Note to self, never let your emotions boil over to the point where you allegedly plot someone's murder. Whether you're dead serious or just popping off steam, it can land you in a prison, in a really bad prison in a foreign country. So how did it get to this point? Let's take a look at the timeline, and then we're going to listen to the 911 calls that were made by various members of the Shiver family. After hearing the calls, I've changed my tune about the case. Let's see if you will as well. I'm going to give you a little synopsis with the timeline, and then we'll listen to the calls. On February 18th of 2023, the wife, Lindsay Shiver, goes on vacation without her husband and three sons. Two days later, on February 20th, Robert dials 911. He tells the dispatcher that his wife, Lindsay, has cut off his cell phone, and he wants a police escort to go to the home with him for fear that Lindsay is going to try and get him arrested. Could this call be Robert trying to document the trouble he's having with his wife? Is the 911 call a way to create a legal record of Lindsay's seemingly erratic behavior just in case they get divorced? Fast forward to the last week of March and Lindsay, Robert, and their three little boys head to the Bahamas for spring break. Strange, because just a month earlier, Robert accused Lindsay of cutting off his cell phone. Just about a week later, on April 5th, Robert files for divorce. The next day, April 6th, Lindsay also files for divorce. Then, just about a week later, on April 12th, Robert dials 911 about a strange USB drive with photos of his wife on it. He insinuates he may have a stalker, and yet we know he himself hired a private investigator to get the goods on Lindsay. What the F is going on? Again, is this Robert trying to get documentation for some reason? He tells the 911 dispatcher that his parents also received an envelope with a USB drive with the same photos of his wife. Then, about a week later, on April 20th, Robert, his mom, and Lindsay all dial 911. Robert is returning from a weekend spent with Lindsay's parents and his three little boys. Note that Lindsay did not accompany her husband and her three sons to her parents' home that weekend. The story Robert's mother, Robin Shiver, tells the dispatcher is that Lindsay's own parents are concerned that she's either having a midlife crisis or is on drugs. 
So both Robert's parents and Lindsay's parents are concerned about Lindsay's erratic behavior. During her interactions with the police on April 20th, Lindsay tells the police that Robert and his parents are the ones with the problem, and she mentions a mental health problem. It's interesting because the Shivers are treating the police like lawyers and trying to get them to mediate in their marriage. May and June seem to go by without any 911 calls. Then on July 16th, Lindsay calls the police to her and Robert's home in Georgia because Robert is refusing to let her on their private jet. And if the couple's having trouble sharing a home, a sprawling home in Georgia, how are they going to share space in a jet when they've become so toxic, even if it's just for an hour? July 16th is also the day that Lindsay sends the text message with the words, kill him, accompanied by a photo of Robert to an alleged hitman in the Bahamas named Farron Newbold. Note that on July 16th, Robert does travel to the Bahamas without Lindsay, but with his three sons. He is later spotted that night at Grabber's Bar and Grill, where Lindsay's new boyfriend, Terrence Bethel, works. Someone snaps a photo of Robert at the bar with his arm around a blonde woman who is not his wife. Now, Lindsay also traveled to the Bahamas, but she did end up traveling separately. Five days later, Lindsay, her boyfriend Terrence Bethel, his friend from school, Farron Newbold, are all arrested and charged with conspiracy to commit murder. So that's the whole tangled web, the whole background. Now let's listen to all these 911 calls together. The first call occurs on February 20th. It's Robert calling 911. <laughs> My wife just got back from out of town, and I uh, believe that we are heading down the road of getting divorced. She just cut my cell phone off um, from Verizon. She called Verizon and had my cell phone disconnected, so I'm calling on my mother's phone at the Verizon store because the only way I can get it back active is if she releases it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have to go over to uh, our home. And with the way that she is behaving, I feel like she might try and call the police to try to set me up as soon as I get there. And I wanted to try to get out in front of it because I'm not a, a risk of, you know, doing anything crazy. I'm just trying to go to my house and if I need to pack my stuff and leave, I can pack my stuff and leave. Um, but my kids are there and... You know, I don't want it to be presented as she goes and screams bloody murder, calls the police over nothing to try to have me uh, carried off in a police car. You can hear that Robert's voice is calm, but he's already fearful that Lindsay may act out and try to get him arrested. At least that's what he's saying. He mentions divorce. Could he be creating documentation that he might need when he does file for divorce? Could this be a way to make her look unstable? Or is she unstable? So then he files for divorce on April 5th. Lindsay files for divorce on April 6th. And then one week later, Robert makes another strange 911 call. Take a listen. I'm getting 911. I do not have an emergency right now, um, but I was wanting to just kind of put you guys on notice of something that has it's, it's been kind of odd. Mm -hmm. Are you the right person to talk to, or do I need to be transferred to a dispatch, or what? This is dispatch. Okay, so today at work, um, I had a letter delivered to me, and it was a USB thumb drive. And... It didn't have a return to sender address or anything, and so I plugged the thumb drive in, and it had all these pictures of my wife on it from about two weeks ago when we were out of the country. <clears throat> and the same thumb drive was delivered to my parents' house uh, about a mile away in an unmarked envelope. 
and it looks like glancing through that it was almost like a, a private investigator but we have spoken with everybody that uh, we know mm-hmm. and they've all confirmed that they they don't know what we're talking about okay. so I don't know if we have like a potential stalker or uh, yeah some some lunatic that's in town that has been mm-hmm. following my wife around Okay. But we just wanted to let you guys know it, it might do, or we would like it if you guys could maybe, you know, just make a couple of uh, passes by our home tonight. We just kind of went through and checked the whole house ourselves. This is very odd because we know that Robert hired a private investigator to track Lindsay's movements in the Bahamas. So why is he talking about a potential stalker? And notice that he had already filed for divorce, and yet he's referring to Lindsay as my wife. The experts say this is a way to align himself with Lindsay. Then on April 30th, three calls to 911 are made, one by Lindsay, one by Robert, and one by Robert's mother, Robin Shiver. What's your name again? Lindsay Shiver. And the kids have been gone all weekend, and my husband just texted me that that was the new plan. And, of course, I won't answer the phone. So who has custody of um, We both do. We haven't gotten that far to a hearing or anything. They've been gone out of town all weekend, and we're in Wigan a few minutes ago heading to the house, and then I get the message that now his mother's going to have them, and I'm not okay with that. So what are y'all trying to do? Custody? 46 dollars. I'm relocating to my last location. I'm in the divorce. The divorce. The divorce. Had my kids with my family all weekend, and I respected that. I didn't go up there with my family. On the way back this morning, they were in Wigan 20, 30 minutes ago. Mm-hmm. 43 they were miles home, out. And then I get the message the that they're dropping. He's dropping them with his parents, who have no right. What's the problem there? Um, we've got a daughter-in-law who's going through a divorce, and she's following me right now. And I know she does have a uh, she does have a pistol, possibly in her car, and she is threatening that we will not get to see her kids because my son is on his way back from having been out of town with the kids. Okay, is your and call at that location right now. She's on my tail, following me right now. And what is her name, ma'am? Lindsay Shiver. S E Y. S A Y. We're gonna be she's not in. She's, she's not well. It's a um, Escalade. It's a black Escalade with black windows, and we're on Pine Tree Boulevard, passing the college right now. And her mother told me to call y'all because they've talked to her, and they said she is really crazy. She's not well, and she's on I don't know what kind of drugs. How old is she, ma'am? She's 35. She's delusional. And you know that. And her mom and husband, myself, we're all like, you've got to go get some help. You've got to go get some help. You're mental. Mental. And she denies it. And then she she left the kids this week and went down to the Bahamas. She could have gotten hold of some drugs down there that everybody thinks she's definitely on. But we can't prove it unless we get a hair sample. So if we could get a hair sample and y'all send it off, or if she could get checked out by a doctor right now, they might find out more that she's been doing these last four days in the Bahamas by herself. My wife and I are going through a divorce, and I've been gone all weekend, and she just uh, threatened myself and my mother to bring the kids back. And her mom is saying to take her to the ER and check her into some mental uh, some institution because we think she's having kind of a midlife crisis mental breakdown so it's super unstable and uh, she just followed my parents when they left the house trying to find the kids and deputies were called but since we live in the city they said we had called Thomasville City instead of the county. Okay, do your parents have the children with them? No, the kids are with me. Okay. Hey, what's the wife's name? Lindsay, L-I-N-D-S-A-Y. Mm-hmm. Dot 
driver's last name, S-H-I-V as in Victor, E-R. What's your name? Robert. And you said you made contact with a deputy who told you to call TV? No. <clears throat> when she was following my parents and sister, mm. they called the police because she was following them. Mm. And they, they stopped her, but they said there wasn't really anything that they could do. Um, and then so now my parents are uh, at a friend's house. And it looks like I've got a tractor on my wife's car. It looks like she's at Publix. And then I'm... Um, uh, we were coming back in from being with her family. Me and the boys were uh, from this weekend, and she just like went off the handle. And so I'm trying to buy some time and not take my kids into an unstable environment. Number one, and she's going off the rails about seeing the kids. So I'm just trying to figure out how to approach this because I, I don't want the boys to see the mom like get you know carted off in a police car if she starts showing out or. Uh, what, what the best course of action is to handle this. So there's a lot there. First, we learned that Robert has been with the boys with Lindsay's parents for the weekend without Lindsay. So it's very troubling that Lindsay's parents are aligning themselves with Robert and his parents. It would appear that they also feel that there's something wrong with Lindsay. Everybody keeps talking about mental health issues and possibly drugs. Now, while Robert seems concerned about how his children will experience all this chaos with their mother, Lindsay doesn't express concern for her children. She's more upset about her rights being denied or wanting to assert herself wanting to get a hold of her children and not have them be with Robert's parents. Through all of it, Robert does seem calm. And then, of course, the next call comes on July 16th when Robert is planning to fly to the Bahamas with the boys. Lindsay wants to be on that plane with them because she wants to head to the Bahamas to see her boyfriend, Terrence Bethel. But again, Robert is concerned. He doesn't want to be in that airplane with Lindsay when it's clear that they're having these arguments that Lindsay is planning to ditch the family, go and spend time with her Bahamian boyfriend. So this is when the police show up at the Shivers' home. There is some conversations going on as Robert is standing in the garage as well as Lindsay. And later, Robert will travel with the three sons to the Bahamas, and he will be seen later that night at Grabber's Bar and Grill. The blonde female up at the bar, they're pretty cozy. It's not Lindsay, so maybe he went there to relax a little. Maybe that's a friend comforting him. And on the same day, Lindsay will send the text message to Terrence Bethel and Farron Newbold with a photo of Robert saying, kill him. And then five days later, she will be arrested along with Terrence Bethel and Farron Newbold for conspiracy to commit murder. Take a listen. This morning, we have travel plans to leave. Mm -hmm. And he's insisting that I don't go. Okay. And then I have my keys. He starts, moves me out of the way, starts trying to unload my car. Tells me he owns the car. He owns the rights to it. Just okay. got super aggressive, and that's when I called immediately because he's been physical before, and I'm just not okay. Not so, doing that. So Lindsay's telling the officer that they have travel plans to leave, but clearly it's Robert who has travel plans to leave on that airplane, not Lindsay. So she's misrepresenting the situation, and Robert's not about to let her get on the plane, which you could argue maybe he should just let her on the plane to avoid this confrontation. Or you could say, well, he's protecting the boys, because he's afraid there will be some confrontation on the plane. Now, we don't know everything about this couple or what's going on, but we do know that Lindsay sent that text message with that message, kill him. And we also know that Robert bailed her out along with her two co-conspirators. The story is that he was concerned about Lindsay being in that notoriously dangerous prison. 
So that's where it stands today. And as I said, Lindsay is now out of the prison. She's stuck in Nassau. She has to stay there. She has an ankle monitor on. She has to check in with the police three times a week. She's no longer in possession of her passport. And if she's convicted on these charges, she could be spending up to 60 years in a prison in the Bahamas. I don't think that Robert can drop charges against Lindsay. The police are the ones who stumbled upon the murder plot, so it's not up to Robert to say, I don't want my wife going to prison, let's drop this whole thing. Let me know what you think in the comments. Until the next time on Bed Crime Stories, hey, do me a favor, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, share the content, ask your friends to subscribe, we're almost at 30k. And I'll see you next time.